documentary film, An Ocean Mystery, is based on a decade-long research effort by the sea around us. And this work was done with support and collaboration from over 300 scientists around the world. And this research effort actually allows us to paint a more accurate picture of the amount of fish that we have taken out of the ocean collectively over the last 60 plus years back to the 1950s. So our research at the sea around us has hit a couple of uh, milestones last year, starting with the publication of uh, our global findings in the scientific journal Nature Communications in January. And that was followed later in the year with the release of our book, The Global Atlas of Marine Fisheries by Island Press. If you don't have one yet, go buy one. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean that we are done. We consider this an ongoing process. We want to update the data regularly. We want to improve on it when, we po when people point out to us that we made a mistake or error. Like in every scientific data set, there's always the possibility of making mistakes, and you need to correct those. And that's what we want to do. Our eventual goal is that these data can be used not only by scientists, but also by the NGO community around the world to help them devise better policies for sustainable fisheries. And we also hope that at some point some of this knowledge and information gained through this work might make it into improved national and international statistics. So now we have this great documentary film, which was directed by Alison Barrett from the Living Oceans Foundation and uh, supported by the Smithsonian Channel. So this film showcases part of the Sea Around Us team, but specifically it follows the principal investigator, Daniel Pauly, as he visits and meets fishermen in Canada, in Newfoundland specifically, uh, in the Bahamas, in Senegal, and in Honduras, is typical representation of our work, where he corroborates in the field what the data that we've been uh, assembling over the years is, has actually been telling us for a while now. What is actually caught is not necessarily reflected in the data that are sent by the countries. Yeah, the, the thing is you might get uh, even uh, politicians to agree with you, but for that to then trickle through the system and overcome decades and institutional inertia to change data reporting system, that is part of the underlying problems. And we had some success, for example, in the Bahamas, where actually the connections and the steps are fairly small. There's a small number of people that make those decisions, and it's usually easier to move things forward under those circumstances than in a big machinery, like, for example, in the Canadian federal government. This is actually Alison's movie, and uh, she should answer it. DVDs <laughs> So yes, so th this film is, um, has a, sort of a long delivery sort of process, and part of what we really hope to do is exactly like you said, which is get this topic more well known by the general public. Um, and so it is broadcasting on the Smithsonian Channel at the moment. It will be broadcasting in Canada on the Smithsonian Channel on May the 7th at 10 p.m. They will then also broadcast it again, although I don't know what the following dates are. Following a little bit of a broadcast run, we will be making this film available free online so that anybody can see it um, and it can be completely accessible to anyone around the world with an internet connection. What's 
get the DVD out there and let's get the, create the political will. We've had a wonderful slap in the face from our experience with the cod fishery in the east. We have three oceans that we border on. We are in a unique position, well educated, well funded, and you know, with intelligent people in government. Thank God in our, for our civil service. But I don't see any, any need for foot dragging anymore myself. I'd like to get a few copies of the movie and distribute them to my friends up and down the coast. We all want to see it. <laughs> Give it some thought. This, this documentary, the lay public, a little bit of everybody, are going to feel a connection and they're going to want to be able to do something and feel empowered to, to make a change. And I see that being possible for researchers, for people in policy or in, in a government NGO position. But how would somebody, the average person, um, be able to make a change in their daily, daily life to, I guess, make a, make a positive impact? Uh, I get this question a lot uh, when I lecture in different places and my recommendation is to join an environment group and to become part of, of the resistance against, uh, uh, especially in the US, uh, the resistance against uh, government policy. Now, in this country, we are fortunate in having a government for that, that uh, says it, listen, and um, uh, I'm a member myself of a, a big uh, environment organization, and we have, we are, are quite happy uh, about uh, the government uh, listening. Uh, Osana, sorry, uh, the, this organization is in all in all meetings that are important in the parliament. I was two weeks ago was in in, in front of the parliament, and uh, the other members are, and. Uh, the gov our government listen to, to things. They want to set up marine protected area. They have uh, uh, improved the transparency or the visibility of the state of the resource that was before not, uh, not visible. There is a, a bill, I think it's called a bill, uh, in, uh, in work that uh, will require stock to be rebuilt. That is a massive change. So, uh, though the, the change has not calculated down to the DFO, the, the minister is on board. The minister, uh, and even the prime minister is on board, and uh, there is a huge push to, to change things. So for individual citizens, I think the best is to, to be organized, to support an organization or to be a member of an organization that pushes. Um, so great film. Uh, I do see the kind of the discussion, the, the pool, uh, kind of like, or resistance that doing advocacy like that can have on trying to collect data. The more you do advocacy and kind of bring it into both public eye, the less governments are maybe willing to give you data. Uh, I'm wondering how you deal with that and if you feel that, if you feel that it restrains your group in terms of doing advocacy um, and how you navigate. I think the problem with advocacy, uh, it, it, it's felt very strongly. Even in our institute, there are colleagues who criticize uh, me and others and, and us as a group for being involved with advocate. Not, it's not, we, we, we don't do the advocacy, but, but she does, in a sense. Uh, the film is advocacy. But I think the problem with the issue with advocacy is for scientists solved by maintaining a scientific profile. If we maintain a, a scientific profile and we, we, we maintain a a uh, good publication in the scientific literature. You cannot smuggle a paper that is advocacy without pa past peer, peer reviewers. You have to say who your funders is, are, who, who funds you, who, who, and you cannot advocate policy w simply from the, yeah, simply as a, because you prefer them. You have to, to justify that. The peer review is, is a, a good filter. And you, besides being a scientist, continuing to produce stuff, you then are a citizen where you're free to express your opinion, and you do. And, and I think maintaining a scientific profile is for uh, an advocate a perfectly legitimate view. Yeah.